Hi, I'm Mike. With our big farm to table dinner less than 15 days away, there's lots of prep work to get done. And today we start cleaning up for about 75 visitors on the ranch. We also get a chance to try out a new attachment on Aaron's two wheel tractor, the BCS, that's gonna help us get the job done. On the project list on our Wyoming Life. <laughs> Welcome back to the project list, an ongoing effort to stay ahead of the little things on the ranch, well, sometimes the big things, that need done constantly. On this board, we keep track of those things, and when Aaron starts adding stuff to the list, we know we gotta do them pretty soon. Our farm to table dinner last year was a huge success. In a short amount of time, we pulled off a catered dinner for around 75 guests, all sourced from the ranch. It was catered by a local restaurant who brought out their wood-fired ovens and cooked brisket, pork shoulder roast from animals raised right here. And they also featured a number of courses utilizing vegetables from Aaron's garden, including golden beets, fennel, onions, potatoes, and carrots. Dessert was a rhubarb sorbet and a honey cookie that had everybody wanting more. Why do I feel like the purpose of our Wyoming life lately is to make everybody hungry? The only thing I can think of is that it makes me hungry. But I guess that's a good thing because as we get ready for farm to table, we're gonna need a lot of energy. And in the long run, that amazing meal, which this year is gonna feature a dessert of hot buttered apples cooked in a wood-fired oven, will be reward for all of us for a lot of hard work. Farm to table dinner is a fundraiser for our local farmers markets. Proceeds from tickets, and this year a silent auction, We'll go to fund programs like Share the Harvest, where farmer, Farmer's Market can buy leftover produce to donate to local food banks. The SNAP and WIC incentive, loyalty programs, and vendor training, along with a whole lot more. It is, I think, a five course meal that begins with people basically milling around the ranch here. They visit all of Aaron's gardens, walking through, and they get a chance to feed the pigs and the calves and horses, and with people strolling around, well, so that's where we're gonna to start today. First, we're gonna clean up outside, then we're gonna move inside the shop. We're gonna test out a new concrete cleaner, and as I mentioned, that new attachment for the BCS two-wheel tractor. So let's get to work. Throughout the year, outside, jobs get done, messes get left, and scrap wood is a majority of the mess. But luckily, we have the equivalent of a rolling dumpster that we can use to gather it up. With a handy dandy hitch mounted to the tractor's three point arms, we can hook up to our dump trailer, already full of junk that needs to go to the dump. Our dump is located about a half a mile from the shop, and after we're connected to the trailer, we can go and empty it. Then we can start filling it again, and probably again. The trailer itself is small. It's about four foot by 10 foot long with about three foot side walls. Think of it as a little dump truck and using a 12 volt battery to power a small hydraulic pump, the hydraulic cylinder pushes the box up and back. After it's lifted, then we can pull forward to dump out the contents. The dump is a fenced off area, about an acre and a half. There's a large pit dug, and usually about once every two years, we're gonna actually burn the dump. First, we take a bulldozer and push everything into the pit, and then in the winter, when snow covers the ground, we perform a controlled burn, sometimes over a couple days, to get rid of all of it. For that reason, we have to make sure that nothing that can't be burned safely is put into the dump, and we only burn it when there's plenty of snow to protect our surrounding areas. With our load emptied, it's time once again to fill it up. Aaron is out and comes over to lend a hand. Teamwork is essential on the wrench, and having an extra set of hands helps out a lot. When cleaning up, you never know what you're gonna find. Woo! I'll never get tired of watching that, although Aaron's probably gonna kill me for putting it in the video.
cleanup nonetheless continues. Aaron's heart rate lowers and we get back to it, moving from spot to spot around the ranch, cleaning up everything from pallets to implements and moving them where they need to be. When the trailer's full, then it's back over to the dump to dump it again. Since the new high tunnel will be on the tour list, I'm sure we can also clean up the scrap wood that we have there. The great thing about taking all this stuff to the dump is that until we burn it, it's not gone. It's just out of sight. If we need something, I know where to go to get it. Yeah, maybe it's a little hoarderish, if, if that's a word. But who wants to go buy a two foot two by four if you need one? Back at the shop where dinner will be served, it's time to get started cleaning up here. After sweeping, we're gonna be testing a new type of concrete cleaner that I've found called ZEP Driveway Concrete and Masonry Cleaner. There are a few stains on the concrete that I'd like to see gone. And if this stuff works in this small area, then I'll feel better about making the investment to do the whole shop with it. Before we get that far, I have the pleasure to introduce you to the newest attachment we have for the BCS two-wheel tractor, and that is a pressure washer. I really do appreciate the BCS having one power unit that can run multiple implements. It's a godsend. It's only one engine to maintain. And having a pressure washer is that one thing that actually surprised me. This pressure washer is capable of up to 4,000 PSI and it should be able to make short work of our concrete floor. I hope. With it in the shop and the door open, of course, for ventilation, the water supply is hooked up and turned on. The machine itself is left in neutral. The PTO is engaged, and after releasing the clutch, we put a little ring over the safety shutoff to keep the PTO running. Everybody probably has their own way of doing this, but I like to wet down the whole floor first, then come through with a squeegee to push the rest of the dirt out and down the drain. Then it's on to the ZEP cleaner. Now the instructions call for six to 12 ounces per gallon of water. So we're gonna go for about eight cups in a five gallon bucket of hot water. My bucket has a hole in it, so we're gonna have to work fast here. Pouring the solution over the floor and then getting to it with a 15 inch floor cleaner that attaches to the pressure washer. This thing really scrubs as we move it through the floor, but it occurs to me that all this water is diluting the cleaner even more, but we're into it now, so we might as well finish. After scrubbing, then it's time to clean it all off, rinse the floor again. Aaron is using a water broom to push the solution and the water and the grime all away. And yes, I know the nozzle's clogged. With a few more pushes of the squeegee, we can now wait and see what we come up with once it dries and how well it cleaned. So the floor is now dry and it really didn't do diddly squat or at least not any more than the pressure washer probably by itself would have done. Maybe with the addition of water to it, it was just over diluted. I'll probably try it again in the worst parts of the spots of the floor, but you know what, sometimes it's what it's all about. You never know if you don't try and you don't learn unless you make mistakes. Maybe I can get the stuff dialed in, maybe I won't. And even though I wouldn't eat off the floor, it's cleaner than it was before. And I doubt any farm to table attendees will be eating off of it either unless you drop your dessert, then you might be tempted. Thanks for coming out with us today. I hope that you're gonna be able to meet us this Thursday, 7 p.m. for our next live stream. That's 7 p.m. Mountain Time. If you didn't notice, we recently passed 40,000 subscribers, and with that, we wanna do something special for, with, for you, so we're gonna be giving away a couple T-shirts, uh, some stickers as well, you know, that kind of stuff during the live stream. We're also gonna be talking about our next giveaway, which will be coming up at 50,000 subscribers and hopefully that's not too far away. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a thing and you can continue with us as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Until I see you on Thursday, have a great week and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life.